You know what it's called? <laughs> Just let it let it roll. Okay. Let it roll. If you are here, it must be Tuesday, and it's got to be life's dream number ninety-five. Hooray! Or hooray! <laughs> This is Corky Siegel. Just in case you didn't know.
madness No room for hate anymore There's no shore in one boat We sail or we sink It don't matter what anybody think There's no shore We are the captains who can steer this boat towards sweet, gentle waters to keep us afloat. With all our goodness, together and joyfully, we'll pour our loving hearts out for this democracy cause we're all in the same boat and there's no shore can't fool mother nature anymore cause there's no shore we're all in one boat No sure We need kindness No room for hate anymore There's no shore We're all in one boat We say Anybody think Cause there's no shore We're all in one boat We are the captains Who can steer this boat Towards sweet gentle waters to keep
keep us afloat with all our goodness together and joyfully we'll pour our loving hearts out for this democracy because we're all in the same boat and there's no shore can't fool mother nature anymore there's no shore we're all in one Story time. <laughs> Shall we go in here for story time? Let's go. Maybe, sure. maybe this will take this little trip. Here we go. Don't bump into the wall like you usually do. <laughs> story time. Ah, uh, look at the snow. It's snowing out. Look at that. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. We're going to shovel before we do story time. No! Get my socks on. No! Okay, so here's story time. And of course, this is life's dream. Life's dream. Life's dream. Life's dream. Live stream. Hooray. 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 <laughs> okay, everyone got that. This is story time. The quiet night, and, and by the way, I have, I'm, I have my notes on the computer. The quiet night on Belmont and Shell Field here in Chicago will be coming up in story time for as long as there is story time. 
the fact that Dion's group was named the Belmonts has nothing to do with me running over to the quiet night in the 70s to see him. I was a big fan of Dion and the Belmonts from the 50s. His music was embedded in every part of my 14, 15, 16 year old body. My and neurosystem. I got to shake his hand and say thank you. Then just a couple years ago, believe it or not, seemingly for no reason, I got a call from him. We spoke for at least an hour. I was so honored. He was a fan. He loved the blues and wanted to talk to me about my experiences. He shared many secrets of his life. And yesterday, when Mike Felton sent me a link to a video of Dion sharing the true story of how he gave his seat to Richie Valens on that tragic flight with the Big Bopper and Buddy Holly, I found myself glued, Holly and I did, we found it, my buddy Holly and I, <laughs> we found ourselves glued to the YouTube video for an hour and 10 minutes. It was riveting. Riveting, riveting. In the video, he stated that it was interesting that there are all these stories about what happened before that crash, yet they're all wrong. And no one bothered to call him, Dion, who was there almost right at the moment they got on the plane. And he had given his seat to Richie Valens. Uh, so anyway, that was that, that, so. Siegel Schwa played for four and a half years, every Tuesday night at the Quiet Night. And originally, starting in 1969, it was with Jim Schwa, Sam Lay, and John Sauter on bass. Before Schwa and I got together, I was putting another band together. It was in San Francisco that I discovered John, John Sauter, sitting on the front porch playing a bass guitar, just learning to play. But he had something special. So I brought him back to Chicago. He was going to stay with me and my parents, but instead, Sam Lay put him up and taught him how to play bass with blues bass with some help from me. And John very soon ended up playing with major blue artists, blues artists like Chuck Berry and John Lee Hooker. And one major rock and roll band that I'm not going to tell you about. He was a fan of Siegel Schwa, but his politics were a little extreme. Anyway, just before Jim Schwa rejoined Siegel Schwa, it was Jim McCarty who played guitar for me. And Jim played with Mitch Ryder and Cactus, if you remember him devil with the blue dress on. Sam Lay and John rehearsed at my mom's and dad's house. And we later all joined Jim McCarty for a tour of the West Coast at Chet Helms Avalon Ballroom, Bill Graham's Fillmore, the Whiskey in Los Angeles, and the Retinal Circus in Vancouver. The group was amazing. And there's a story written in the Vancouver music rag where the reporter was standing next to Janis Joplin, who was jumping up and down and yelling more, more, more after our last song. While on the road, Buddy Miles tried to hire the whole band out from under me and succeeded only with Jim McCarty, who later shared with me he didn't receive what he was promised from Buddy Miles and was sorry that he quit the band. But that was the end of that band. I really loved McCarty. He was an amazing player. So we came back to Chicago without a guitar player. And just when we got back, Jim Schwal calls and says he wants to start up the band again. What great timing. So our very first gig at The Quiet Night was with Jim Schwal, Sam Lay, and John Sauter on bass. And thus began our 4.5 year stint every Tuesday at The Quiet Night with six people in the audience, then 12 people, then 20, then eight, then 18. That was about it. So no one was making enough money to keep doing this. 
and you know, we were waiting for other gigs to come come through on the weekends, but n nothing was coming through. So John was offered a gig with a major rock band. Sam left to pursue some more substantial fees. And that's when Shelley Plotkin took on the drums and Rollo joined on bass. We made our last recording on Vanguard and our first recording on RCA. And Seth Mason, along with his partners at WXRT, a very powerful radio station in Chicago, as most of you know, called all the radio stations around the US and insisted that they play Siegel Schwal recordings. And they did. And all of a sudden there are lines around the block at the quiet night, all the shows full capacity. And now we're getting so many gigs every week that we decided to just limit it to weekends only because we were making so much money, we didn't know what to do with it. And, and that was the new Siegel Schwal band until February of 1974. So the poster is from 1974, right after Siegel Schwal disbanded for a while, and I went solo. It was my first gig, it was at the quiet night, and as you can see, I was opening for five nights for Muddy Waters. And that's a whole story in itself, which I've told before. The other, not <laughs> the other notables on the poster were Chuck Mangione, who sent me all his albums, Bob Marley and the Whalers, who I got to hang with. Martin Mull and Ricky Jay, who I became really good friends with both of them. And Martin Mull joined me in a show of mine in Denver when I had just smashed my own hand in a car door. Not a smart thing to do. Don't ever do that. <laughs> Martin Mull came and helped me on the gig. He showed up on stage. No one knew yet who he was. And little by little, he eventually took over the crowd and blew their minds because Martin Moe was, as a solo show, was just unbelievable. Anyway, that poster holds so many beautiful memories for me. But that's all beside the point. This is one of those simple but poignant, touching, sweet stories of synchronicity that focuses everything on a single moment on one finite bullseye that tells us we are in the right place at the right time. The Quiet Night people were special, famous characters who are still my family. Richard Harding, the iconic owner, her daughter, his daughter Kathy still joins us on these broadcasts every once in a while. Eddie Bolchowski, who we did a live stream about, he was the one-armed caretaker who lost his arm in the Spanish War as a Lincoln Brigade hero. And he drew our Siegel Schwal 953 West album. And there's a whole story about that. And my dear Raquel Ross, the PR person. Richard Rose worked the door and sound, Rick Stevens. And then there was Charlie Thorne, a doorman and carpenter. All of these friends nurtured the quiet night like a rare, delicate seedling. Sometimes Charlie served up as the tall receptionist at the top of the long flight of stairs and was known to three, throw people down the stairs who weren't cooperative. <laughs> I know one situation. And, and that, that guy and I are very good friends. The Quiet Night has some great woodwork, and I believe Charlie did most of it. The owner, Richard Harding, would always introduce people to the woodwork. He was so proud of it, and he was always brag about the people at the quiet night and Rake, Raquel he called Rocky he loved Rocky <laughs> and Charlie also did some cabinet work for us and I'll show you some shots of those and Charlie accompanied Richard on a blind date that began at our apartment and Charlie ended up marrying Richard's blind date I won't mention her name her name's Sarah <laughs> The personality of the quiet night shone through Richard and all his people. And they were all such an upliftment to my soul. Just to be around them, just to know they are on this earth. Or for some of them, at least in heaven. And then there was Ray Augren, bartender, who moved to Portland and became partners in a company called Bullseye Glass. Ray will be our punchline. <laughs> 
for story time today. In 1987, of course, this is years after The Quiet Night, Holly and I had volunteered to host a historic international figure who would talk about philosophy, religion, spirituality, meditation, and was coming to Chicago. We were working with a front group of about 15 people who were looking for just the right venue. We were all having lunch together in a downtown Chicago cafe. Holly and I had just come back from Portland where we spent some time with Ray Algren from back in the quiet night days who had just moved there and became partners in a company called Bullseye Glass. Ray showed Holly who was, she still had her graphic design business at this time on Michigan Avenue. He showed her how to do art glass, how to make art glass. It was an experimental project to show Holly and she, you know, cut the glass and laid it over, you know, in little pieces to see how it all works. And this is how it came out. One of my favorite, one of my, these are a few of my favorite <laughs> things. I just love this piece. I love it. So here we are sitting at this table with 15 people, mostly from New York. Holly and I had just got back from Portland. Some stranger at an adjacent table for some reason struck up a conversation with some of our people and mentioned they were visiting Chicago from Portland. You know how sometimes you feel like you know everyone and everyone knows everyone else? As soon as Holly heard the word Portland, she spoke up. Do you know Ray? <laughs> and I said, Holly dear, just because he's from Portland doesn't mean he knows Ray. Everyone just started laughing. Of course, a stranger responded, no, sorry, I don't know Ray. Everyone was laughing and Holly was so embarrassed. And then the stranger jokingly said, Ray who? And Holly responded, Ray Algren. And the stranger said, you mean Ray Ogren from Bullseye Glass? I'm good friends with his partner. <laughs> Everyone was screaming. Vindicated. <laughs> <laughs> what are the chances? Well, apparently very good. And that's story time. Well, it looks like we've really used up a lot of time. So maybe we'll just go to our Zoom, right, Holly? That's right. Let's let's say goodbye together. Come on over here. Okay. See if we could do this. Is this how it works? No, like this. So, so we'll see you on the Zoom. But we should say corkymusic.com slash stream, right? That's right. Because otherwise people won't know where to go. <laughs> <laughs> so in case you need the link to the Zoom or links to the older Life's Dream or even our extravaganza project, the 100-minute extravaganza with Chamber Blues and all our guests, Ernie, and all, uh, Ernie Watts, and now I have to name everybody. It's pretty fantastic. Yeah, just it's fantastic. Okay, anyway, uh, we'll see you on our Zoom. That's right. Bye-bye. <laughs>